Hi, thought I'd do a very quick video just to show you what developments are currently going on in Beavis Pits. I've got my two 3D printers here. These are Ender 3, Creality Ender 3 printers. This one I've had for about two years. And this one here I bought recently. This was actually bought on eBay secondhand. Um, so that I ended up with two identical ones. This is the, the, the standard Ender 3. There is actually an Ender 3 Pro, which has a few other sort of modifications, like a sort of thicker Y-axis beam and uh, a couple of other changes that they've done. But I bought this one secondhand because I wanted to get one that's really similar to the one I already had. A couple of slight differences. The display looks a slight a little bit different there, works the same, um, possibly different firmware running on this one, maybe maybe slightly older firmware. Now you'll notice here that this one here has a stepper motor up here and this one doesn't. The stepper motor is back over there. That's because this one has a direct drive system built onto it, whereas this one is still going down through the Bowden cable. Um, I know that my channel is all about Freelander 2s, Land Rover car things. I'm going to be doing a few videos, I think over the next few months, talking about 3D printing because this is how I develop my projects and my car parts. Here in yellow, we can see some brackets being printed. This is for a catch can on cars with uh, the automatic gearbox and the oil cooler. Okay, so this cutout that you can see in this corner here is to clear the hoses that go to the oil cooler. Now, I'm already making these and selling them. Um, so what I've done is I've made a mold out of silicone using this as a, as a sort of a buck for the mold. And then I pour in hard rigid polyurethane um, which can handle the temperatures in the engine bay. I've already fitted a bracket to my car. Mine's a manual gearbox, so it doesn't need this cutout here. So um, then was approached by a member of the Facebook group who tried to fit one of my manual gearbox brackets and found that it didn't fit because this is an automatic with an oil cooler. So we then went on a a sort of a two month long uh, sort of a trial trial and error of me printing various brackets and sending them to him and him trying to fit them and telling me what didn't fit uh, and we ended up with this design here so there's a cut out here and there's also this piece here now this piece there is not used on the bracket for the manual gearbox this piece here goes underneath the top end to move the whole thing to sort of space it out very slightly. When these print-offs are finished, I'll do another video, maybe I'll do a separate video um, talking all about this. This printer over here is currently printing in blue PLA, uh, or PLA Plus, and that is my latest lift spacer design. So I've been making and selling polyurethane lift spacers uh, for a couple of years now. The spacers that I have been selling have been 20 millimeters thick, which gives a lift of around 25 to 30 millimeters. It seems to vary from car to car. Um, but what I thought I'd do was print off a new, slightly better design in, in, in 3D print, in, in, in plastic, um, try or fit it onto the top top plate for a, for a strut, front suspension strut, and then when it's when it's absolutely right I'll make a, a silicone mould and then cast that in, in a, a, a fairly firm polyurethane rubber. Uh, it's actually slightly, slightly flexible. So what I'll do is do another video on the development of the latest design of lift spacer. The advantage of printing on the 3D printer means that I can actually make them thicker for a higher lift and it can also have a domed top surface 
can actually do it in two parts so that the, uh, the concave side is underneath the, the top of the strut and then a convex side on top. My spacers that I've been selling for the last couple of years have a flat top because it's a single mould and the polyethylene is poured into the mould and obviously settles out with a, with, a, with a flat surface on top. Now that works okay on a 20mm lift because there's a bit of flex in these spaces. If you're going to go higher than that, then it needs to really shape itself to the, to the uh, or be shaped to the, the curvature of the bodywork that it's, that it's bolting into. So I'll do a separate video talking about those. I've already done the rear spaces, so very soon I'm going to be offering rear lift spaces up to 50 millimeters lift. Okay, so 20, 30, 40, or 50 millimeter, whereas previously I only did 20. So, um, exciting times, exciting projects ahead. I still need to finish off my Webasto heater project and lots of other things. Um, winch, snorkel, gauges etc etc there's lots and lots of projects on my list and a lot to keep me very busy over the next year so um so this autumn should see some exciting videos being uploaded and i hope that you enjoy watching them okay thank you very much for watching this little one and uh, we'll see you in the next video thank you very much bye